If you're building websites using advanced custom fields and custom post types, one of the problems you have in the dashboard is that the listings you have for any of the custom posts that you post are very, very minimal. You have the title and you have the date that it was created. That doesn't really give you or your client any real information about the content of the actual post itself. And today we're going to take a look at a free plugin that you can use to open up a ton of really cool possibilities. This is the free version. There is a pro version available. But what we're going to cover in today's video, you don't need that pro version. However, later on in the video, we will take a look at some of the things that you have in the pro version. And if you think this is something worth checking out, you can follow the link. This is not affiliated, sponsored, or anything else. This is just something that I think is very useful for you when working with custom post types and advanced custom fields. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Test, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If you want to learn more, click on that subscribe button, smash that bell icon to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's just jump onto the dashboard now and take a look at what we're talking about. This is the typical kind of interface you're going to see inside the dashboard when you're dealing with any custom post types you've created using custom post type UI and ACF. Really quite minimal information, the title, and we've got the actual date that it was published. Other than that, there's not really much more in there. However, wouldn't it be much better if we ended up with something a bit more like this? With this kind of layout, we've got a ton more options. We've got featured images, we've got custom taxonomies, we've also got a series of actions we can use over on the right hand side. So it makes it a much more intuitive interface to work with when you're dealing with any kind of content or create through your custom post types. Now, before we go ahead and take a look at how to do this, a big shout out to Andrew McKim over on the WP Tets Facebook group. He's the one that actually brought it to our attention to say that you can actually use the free version of this plugin to achieve the results that we've got on screen in front of us. So thanks very much, Andrew. You're a star. So the plugin we're going to be taking a look at today is Admin Columns. So first thing you need to do is go ahead, download it, install it, and then activate it. So I've installed it. I'm just going to activate the plugin. Once we've done that, we get a new entry inside our plugin section, and we're going to come into the settings option inside there. Once we open that up, we have a very simple looking interface. At the top, we've got three tabs, the admin columns. This is where we'll do the bulk of our work, the settings section where we can fine tune and configure some various different settings and add ons where we can take a look at some of the commercial add ons you can add to this version to give you a little bit more functionality. Let's come back into the admin columns tab. And as you can see at the moment, we're taking a look at the businesses and this is where we can see our custom post type. So we've got our businesses section, but we can change that to anything at all throughout our entire WordPress copy. We click, you can see we've got things like post types, custom fonts, my templates, anything you have as part of your WordPress. So we can easily come in and fine tune and configure anything we want inside you. For this example, we're going to stick with the businesses, which is the custom post type that we've created. Now click on that and this shows us what we currently have listed as part of our business listing. In this example, just the title and the date. Now we can expand those out if we want to and we can edit them and you can see we can change the information. So instead of title, we could just say business name, for example. So we could change that on there and make it a little bit more unique to this particular information. So we say business name. We can set the width on there if we want to. We can set it to auto. We can set a percentage value. We can drag that over. We can put a pixel value, whatever we want to fine tune the way this looks. I'm going to leave those as they are because it's going to work perfectly fine. The date, again, we could come in if we want to and we can edit that and make any changes we want in there. However, the power of this comes in when we start to control exactly what information we want to display. If we come down, we can say add column. We're going to click on there and you can see this now gives us various different things we can do. We've got the type of column and we've got actions, attachments, custom fields, all those kinds of things. And if we come down and say advanced custom fields, you'll see it immediately says you have to have the add on to use this. So you might at first think, well, it's no good for me with ACF. Well, we can use various different things on there. Let's just say we want to link this through to a taxonomy. So we've created various different taxonomies for our businesses, like business location, business type, and so on. Well, we can reference those. So we can come down and we can say we want taxonomy, for example. You can see that now gets rid of that error message or that message saying we need to update and pay for the add-on. Now we can say the label is taxonomy. But we can change that to wherever we want. You can see taxonomy, business location or we can choose business type. So these are the taxonomies that we've created for our custom post types and any other taxonomies we may have listed will be available to us. And again, we get the same control. So we can do things like the type, the label and so on. So we can change that from taxonomy and we can just say business location and we can click on update on there. Once we've done that, if we come back over now and take a look at our business listings, we should now see 
we have that additional information inside there. Problem we have is it doesn't look very good because obviously the date is now sitting before our custom taxonomy listing. So let's just jump back over and all we need to do to update that is simply drag and drop to reorder these any way we want to. So we can drag that down, put that underneath, hit update, come back out to our listing and we'll refresh this and now we get a much more usable layout. And as you can see, we've now got our custom name at the beginning on the first section, as opposed to just title. We have business location and we can do whatever we want with it, any of the other fields we may want to put in there. Let's go ahead and add another taxonomy in. So we're going to add a new column, do the same thing again. We're going to scroll down and we find the taxonomy option. This time we're going to change this from business location to business type. We can change that label as well. And we can say business type, business type, where we want to do on there. We'll hit update. And then we'll reorder these to make sure everything is laid out that we want. So we've now got the business type, the business location all set up. Just make sure, update, come back over and take a look at our listing section, refresh this. And we now have the name of the business, the business location and the business type. So these are very useful. And as you can see, we can do things like we can order these now by the business type like we could before. And we can order them by the business date. But we can't do that by the location or the type. This is one of the limitations you have with the free version. If you want to have filtering and you want to have things like inline editing and so on, the pro version is going to give you a lot more. But like I say, for most users that are using ACF and just want something that's a little more intuitive when they look at their custom post type listings, this is going to work fine. Now let's go take a look at how we can add something that's part of the normal WordPress inside as well to make this even more user friendly. Let's come back into our editing for the admin columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to add another column in. This time we're going to choose we want to have the featured image. Once we do that, we now get a range of different options. You can see again, we've got the featured image. We can change the label if we want to. Again, we can adjust the width and so on of the column. What we now have, though, is the image size. We can choose custom size or we can choose any of the predefined sizes that we have as part of WordPress itself. The custom size is set to 60 pixels by 60 pixels, but you can change that to whatever you want. With a featured image in place, let's just reorder things now to make this a little bit more intuitive. Let's just close these down so we can see a bit better what's going on. What we're going to do now is we're going to drag the featured image up. We're going to put that after the business name. Drop that in there and we're going to close these up. We'll hit update again. Come back over and take a look at our business listing. And we now have the thumbnail for that particular business. So this already looks a lot more user friendly. Like I say, this is something that just when you're working with lots and lots of businesses or listings and things, it can get quite difficult to find what you want. So having a featured image in there makes the process a little easier alongside the business name and also things like the location and the business type. Now that in itself makes the whole process of working inside your new custom post type a lot easier, but there's more. And this is just like it's a scratch of the surface of the kinds of things you can do with the free version of this plugin. Let's come down and add another column in. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it to the actions this time. And you see actions is the title or the label for that. And that's perfectly fine. We can then say use icons, yes or no. Now you might be wondering what exactly is the actions going to do? Bear with me a second. Let's just say yes for the icons and let's just update this. We've now added in a new column, called it actions, set it to use icons. Now we need to see what it's going to do. Let's come back over and you can see now we have a new section on the right hand side that allows us to do things like we can edit, we can quick edit, we can delete or we can preview it. So adding the actions in just makes the whole thing even more user friendly and intuitive. So we have the action set up in there, but we also have tons of other things we can do. Now I'm not going to cover those in this video because most of them should be self-explanatory. And if you're not sure, you can just activate it as a column and see what it does. But it can be very, very useful. So let's just take a look at some of the things we have. You can see under the custom section, we have tons of options. We have actions, which we've just seen. We can also do things like list attachments, the author, content, the date it was published, the depth, estimated reading times, excerpts, IDs, tons of things, permalinks, short codes, short links, you name it, most of those options are going to be in there, including things like word count. So if you want to quickly just skim through and see how many words you have, if you're dealing with a blog and you want to make sure there's a, a kind of word limit, you can just check that out and see exactly how many words are included on the page that you have. So this is one of those plugins that the free version gives you so many options that are available. If you want more, such as like filtering, inline editing, and all those kinds of good things, I'd say recommend taking a look at the pro version and seeing some of the things that that can do and bring to the table to open up even more functionality.
So if you're working with things like advanced custom fields and you want to just save time editing, you can see we have things like content editing, smart filtering on your columns. You can sort your content, create column sets, export to CSV, tons of options and tons of things. So, so take a look at Admin Columns Pro. And if you think those features are for you, grab yourself a copy, install it and get on with creating a great admin experience for you or your customers. Well, there we go. That's how we can take Admin Columns, the free version, how we can combine it with advanced custom fields and custom post types, and how we can create much more intuitive, user-friendly listings for anything we create using advanced custom fields. Have you ever used this yourself, or is this something you consider using in either a current project, a past project, or in your next project? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback on this and what you think of it. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below alongside our affiliate links. So anything you click on and purchase, if they're affiliated, it doesn't cost you any more money because a small percentage back to the channel and we really appreciate your help and support. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.